everyone. Today's devotional reading will be from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 7, verses 11 through 17, where it is written, Soon afterwards he went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd went with him. As he approached the gate of the town, a man who had died was being carried out. He was his mother's only son, and she was a widow, and with her was a large crowd from the town. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion for her and said to her, Do not weep. Then he came forward and touched the bier, and the bearer stood still, and he said, Young man, I say to you, rise. The dead man sat up and began to speak, and Jesus gave him to his mother. Fear seized all of them, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has risen among us, and God has looked favorably, favorably on his people. This word about him spread throughout Judea and all the surrounding country. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Raising the widow's son was one of three resurrection accounts in the Gospels prior to our Lord's own resurrection. And each one has a different flavor. His friend Lazarus shows that Jesus has emotions. The synagogue ruler uh, raised Jairus had a daughter he raised, showing our Lord's fondness for people that society overlooks. And actually, this is where Jairus' daughter and the widow's son at Nain line up. Jairus had a little girl. Children meant nothing. It was a sexist world. What's a little girl? Nothing. But it meant a lot to Jairus, so it meant a lot to Jesus. Similar here. This is a society, like I said, was very sexist. A woman without a husband or a son or a brother is nothing. She has no brother in this text. A widow, her husband's dead. That son is this woman's lifeline. Not only did she lose her kid, she lost her livelihood, lost everything. Jesus goes and sees her in the midst of her suffering. Eh, you're up. Get out of here. You're up. And the suffering of losing her son, and he's like, stop. Young man, get up. And he's alive again. Jesus saw the woman suffering, could not bear that. Not just lost of her son, but lost of everything. What would she do? Maybe a prostitute? Maybe gravel for money? And that's about it. Oh yeah, you lost your son on top of all that. You couldn't bear that. Raise the son to life. Remember to all of us, when there's real trouble and real adversity in the world, well, why doesn't Jesus do something about it? Many times he does. In fact, he is acting in this world to stop these things. Now, it's rarely as dramatic as in this text saying, okay, Israeli-Palestinian situation, it's over. Russia-Ukraine, it's over. But God more often acts uh, through people. If there's homelessness, God raises up champions. Keep people housed. For he doesn't just want to uh, drop a house out of the sky with food, because that way human beings will learn nothing. There's a social system, and people learn values, and people, you know, why don't you just tell, take all drugs and alcohol and just poof, make them disappear? Because even if God were to do that, people would not deal with the underlying issue of what drove them to alcohol and drugs in the first place. And like anything else, Jesus is not just handing out, okay, let's get out of here. Like any kind of counselor, anyone in rehab, what got you here in the first place? How can you avoid it? And that is why so often Jesus Christ doesn't just act dramatically like in here. But rest assured, he sees what's going on in the world. He weeps when we weep. His heart is broken by the things that break our heart, and he cares. Well, that's a nice flaw, but what's he really doing? Well, in the end, when he returns to this world in the resurrection, all that stuff, all the warfare... All the misconduct, women getting abused, all the drug and, drugs and alcohol and poverty, and any fill in the blank, any evil thing will be gone forever. He'll do something about it and it will be gone. Between now and the time of his return, we pray, Jesus, show us where you want us to be. Show us where you bring your kingdom, your healing to this world. And when we've worked against you, when we've hurt you, when we've sinned and hurt others, Jesus, forgive us. And that's the beautiful resurrection he shows to us. At one point we were a walking textbook example of, oh, a horrible human being. Didn't care. Hurting God, hurting others. 
The Holy Spirit convicted us. We repented and now we're his. We're brought from death to life. And so he brings that to all those with faith in him. So don't lose heart. He cares. He's working in this world. That being said, let us close with a prayer. Lord, forgive us. May we not get arrogant. Lord, be thankful for your forgiveness. And we draw more and more people into your kingdom. Amen.